and master and friend. He has given us this a brand new day. And we say thanks be to God. God has kept us. He has woken us up Bless this morning to see a brand new day. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. God is indeed our good God. And a portion of Psalm 148 says, Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise ye him all his angels, praise ye him all his host, praise ye him sun, moon, praise him all the stars of light, praise him ye heavens of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord. From the earth he dragons on all the deep. So this is a reading of a portion of God's holy word, and we honor it by saying thanks be to God. And so I'm going to invite us to just journey to join me at this old-fashioned altar this morning. I'm going to invite us to come forward. As we do in the morning rest, we're going to do that song as a prayer to ask him as to do in the morning to rest upon us gently rest upon my heart like the dew in the morning gently rest upon my song to ask him to fill our cups this morning. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this
so feel a high of Lord I lifted up Lord come and quench this thirsting of my just thank him for something thank him for something at this time lord god we thank you lord god we thank you for waking us up this morning thank you for this brand new day the rains came so hard but lord you have caused it to stop so we can be out oh god we thank you for the gift of life we thank you for this brand new day thank you lord for a warm bed to have slept in thank you for roof above our heads thank you for food so many things oh god that you have done for us you continue to do for us you woke us up indeed clothed in our right mind we can gather freely and openly oh god here at this assembly thank you for a place of worship thank you for family thank you for friends oh god thank you for a job oh god we praise you we honor you Oh God, we say, God, you're good, you're great, you're, you're mighty, you're God with us, you are our Father, our friend, Emmanuel. We thank you and praise you. Somebody just put your hands together for the Lord. Praise be to God. The praise team will continue to sing that song as you return to your seats. Praise be to God. Fill my cup, Lord. I seated all across this place and today here at the Greater Portmore Open Bible Church it is our mission Sunday and we say welcome to everyone and if you have joined us for the first time on the World Wide Web we say welcome to you welcome to the Greater Portmore Open Bible Church located here in Portmore St. Catherine Jamaica and if you have joined us for the first time this is the place where the gospel and the friendship meet. Welcome again to you. 
This morning, our moderator is our Elder Carlton Brown, and so we invite him to come along at this time. Elder Brown. Good morning, church. Good morning, each and every one who have joined us on the World Wide Web this morning to worship and to give God thanks and to give him praise and to give him glory of which he so deserved of. Church, what a rain. What a rain. Glory to God. Church folks, you did pray for the rain, and it did come, right? Yes. Even though some of us was adversely affected, because I too came home and had to sweep out and mop up some water. But thanks be to God. You know, the teachers, they got an extra day of which they were so deserving of. The student got some time off, a long extended weekend. Glory to God. So there is some good in it. Amen? Glory to God. But look here. The rain that we, the, we as Christians have been praying for, it came. And what is going to happen is that we are going to see the production level of the fruit crops. It will be yielding its fruit. And when you go to the market, you will not see a pound of yam for $350 or $400. Glory to God. So there are benefits from it. Amen? Glory to God. Put your hands together for the Lord. The Lord has been wonderful. He has been marvelous. He has been an awesome God. He has been a good God. And we are come here this morning to give him praise. This morning is Mission Sunday. Right? Every third Sunday is Mission Sunday. And I want to tell you that God has called us, well, in many different areas, in many different ways. But there are three ways that God has called all Christians. The first one is that he has called us to salvation. And then we get salvation, and then we, for, we forget the second one, but we remember the call, the rapture call. But I just want to remind you about the second call that it is more, that it is important as just as the rest. He has called us to be fishers of men. Peter was fishing. And Jesus' two cousins was with Peter. And when they see the miracle that God could do, when they had the drought and they catch so many fishes, when God said, you know what? From this day, you will no longer catch fish, but you will be fishers of men. It is a call that we ought to eat to, to go seek the soul that is lost. They drop their nets and everything and immediately follow Christ. Christians mean followers of Christ, and if we are followers of Christ, then we need to be obedient unto his call. Put your hands together for the Lord. This morning, after Sunday school class, Reverend McDonald will be holding a little session with the evangelical department. And those who are interested in evangelizing the world, we are inviting you to be a part of it. It is immediately after the Sunday school class. So I invite all of us to be in attendance. Enough said. We will start our this morning program and our opening hymn is All Hail the Power of Jesus and may I invite the praise and worship team to come and lead us. Immediately following the opening hymn and I'm going to ask you to stand please in the presence of the Lord. We will have our intercessory prayer and this will done, be done by Brother Wayne Thompson who is the MOV intercessor prayer leader. Hallelujah. Shall we praise the Lord, church? Come on, that song, 
Let the weather kind of cool us up. Shall we praise the Lord? Hallelujah. We're going to hail up our king this morning. The song says, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Hallelujah. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him. Crown him, crown him, crown him, and crown him, Lord. Oh, Lord, the chosen seed, the chosen of Israel's race, he ransomed from the fall, he ransomed from the fall, hail him who saved you by his grace and crown. of the fourth verse, the final verse. Oh, that which yonder sacred throne, we at his feet may fall. We join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. Let's sing with gusto and strength oh, to our God this morning. Oh, that which yonder. Oh, that which yonder sacred throne. We are this feet may fall. We are this feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, and crown. remain standing as Brother Wayne Thompson will come and lead us in this morning intercessor prayer. Morning church. Beautiful morning, is it? Yeah? Hallelujah. 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 Mighty God, mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Mighty God. As we come before you this morning, great God. There's nothing good about us, great God. We have messed up from day to day, mighty God. We have not done much right, Jesus. But you have never thrown us in a garbage heap, mighty God. But you have rather lifted us with such grace and mercy. 
Hallelujah. And we ask for that grace and mercy this morning, Jesus. You have been so great to us, God. And yet, we continue to question your work, Jesus. But this morning, God, we ask that you will forgive us of all our sins. All of our sins, mighty God, that we would have committed knowingly and unknowingly, great God. We give you thanks, God, that you are the great God that scooped out the hills and created this universe, mighty God. You are the God that blew dust and man, a man came, mighty God. So we give you thanks this morning, Jesus. We give you thanks, God, for your awesomeness. There's none to compare unto you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that we are in the sanctuary this morning, Jesus. And we are here to give you praise and worship, great God. Because it is in the sanctuary that you dwell with your people, God. And the sanctuary, in my mind, is like a court. And cases will be called today. Hallelujah. And I, and I pray, God, that as we are in court today, mighty God, and case our call, I pray, God, that we will reach out to your God. We will praise you. And so that you will see us and call our case, mighty God. There are cases, God, that of we need you every time, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Show up this morning, Jesus. I ask you, God, to show up, mighty God. I ask, God, that you will call my case this morning, Jesus. Many of us have cases, Jesus, different cases, different needs, different wants, mighty God. But in order to get your, our name called, I believe we should worship you and praise you this morning, Jesus. Call my case, Lord. I am not without sin, Jesus. None of us are, Jesus. And therefore, God would have wanted you to do and call our case this morning, God. Wash us, cleanse us. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, wash and cleanse us and keep us as you have always, great God. This morning, God, I pray for your people, God. We realize and we recognize, God, that the spirit of oppression is against your people, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty God, the spirit of oppression is against your people, those in this church and in our nation, God. You are God. You are God, and each time we call on you, you have never failed to answer Jesus. We come against the spirit of suicide. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come against the spirit of suicide. And we beat you at your game this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We say, Spirit of suicide, back up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every oppressive spirit, every depressive spirit, we give you notice in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We take, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Mighty God, we pray for your people who are sick this morning, Jesus. We pray we come against every sicknesses and disease this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we declare, God, that our case will be called this morning, Jesus. And that we will be set free and we will be healed. Because you are Jehovah Rapha, the healer, mighty God. And we can depend on you, Jesus. There's nothing too hard for you, nothing difficult, God. So we give you thanks this morning, God, for what you will do. For your people who are under stress, 
depressed and oppression, mighty God. We come against every spirit of depression again, Jesus. There's a heaviness, mighty God. Hallelujah. The devil wants to take your people out, God. But you are God, and you will not allow it, Jesus. So, God, we give you thanks and praise for what you will do. We give you thanks, God, that we are in your house, mighty God, and that we love you. We love you with an everlasting love, great God. And we pray this morning that even one word we will go home with this morning, God, and that we will use it to witness, to worship, and to share among your people, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that we are alive and well. And we are here to love you, Jesus. We are here to love you in spite of and despite of all our shortcoming, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for the speaker this morning, God. We pray, God, that when he speak or she speak, God, they will speak as an oracle of you, Jesus. And that we will, God, as I said, get a word that will serve us even throughout this week, mighty God. I pray for the praise and worship, God. That praise and worship will be like never poor, God, like the rain, like the flood rain that we had, God. And that we, none of us will be spectators this morning, Jesus, because we are in the house of God. We are here in the sanctuary, and we are here to love you and give you praise and worship, Jesus. I pray for the musician, God. I pray, God, that you will speak to their heart, mighty God, that they will not just come to church play music God but they will be here to just worship you to mighty God I pray for the leadership of this great work God I pray God that you continue to give them direction God you continue to be the leader you are their good shepherd mighty God and we love you God and we give you thanks hallelujah 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 stay with us today Jesus stay with us throughout this week mighty God Stay with us, God. We love you and we need you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Mighty God. Cover each and every person in this church, mighty God, in this sanctuary, God, and those that are on the World Wide Web, mighty God. Cover them under your blood, Jesus, as we do and love you, God. And we ask God that as we continue to clean our home, we continue to mop up and dry up, God. I pray, God, that you will give us the strength, the energy, mighty God. Cover us under your blood today, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. As we wait for those to come inside, get your heart ready. Prepare for praise and worship. We praise God for the things that he has done for us. And we worship him because of who he, who he, who he is. Let me invite the church to stand once again as we invite the praise and worship team to come and lead us in a time of praise and worship. We've come to worship. We've come to worship. We've come to worship. All glory belongs. Church, have you come to worship? We've come to worship.
up with the voices this morning. Hallelujah. Can we just lift up musicians? Just hold one moment. Just, just the voices. Just the voices. Let's just lift up God in this place. We come to worship. worship you in your sanctuary God we've come to lift up your holy name this morning we've come to exalt your name God because you have been good and your mercies endure it forever oh God we honor your name in your sanctuary this morning be pleased with our praises this morning oh God we welcome your Holy Spirit come in our midst come in our midst come God, you declare you will share your glory with no one. Come in our midst and help us to give you the worship, the glory, and the honor. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah, Jesus! Hallelujah! We praise you, God! Hallelujah! This is missions morning and so we're going to be singing about our commitment to our God. Oh God, experience of sweet salvation. And if there's anybody here who has not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, the Spirit says, come. Hallelujah. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday I've got my mind made up And I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus someday Come on, let's go! I've got my mind made up And I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus someday I've got my mind made up And I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus I've got my mind made up I've got my mind made up And I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus Someday I've got my mind laid up And I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus Goodbye world Goodbye world I say no longer with you Goodbye pleasures of sin I say no longer with you I made up my mind Go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind. To go God's way the rest of goodbye world. Goodbye world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind. To go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of born, my born, born again. Born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. Born, born, born again. 
Hallelujah. I want to see my Jesus someday. Hallelujah. No matter what we're going through. No matter what may come our way. Hallelujah, Jesus. Our life is in God's hand. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Sing that song, church. Troubles, they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way. My life is in Let's your take it from hand. the top again. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. And don't be afraid. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Joy Hallelujah. Comes in the morning. Troubles they don't last always. Troubles they don't last always. For there's a friend. Jesus, who will wipe your tears away, and if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, oh, I know that I can make it, I know that I can stand, no matter Come my way, my life is in with Jesus. Your I can take it with Jesus. I can take it with Him. I know I can stand no matter what may come my way. My life is in your hands. So when you're testing trials. So when your tests and trials that seem to get you down, they seem to get you down, and all your friends and loved ones, and all your friends and loved ones are nowhere to be found, are nowhere to be found. Remember, there's a friend named Jesus. Who will wipe your tears away? And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way. With Jesus, I can take it. With Him, I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. Feel like singing that second verse like when our tests and trials. And when our tests and trials. They seem to get you down And all your friends and loved ones They're nowhere to be found oh, Remember, remember, remember There's a friend, a friend in Jesus, Jesus Who will wipe your tears away And if your heart is broken just lift your hands and say, Oh, I 
of Jesus it is safe it is protected there is assurance of eternal life oh praise God put your hands together for the Lord one more time glory to God hallelujah praise God praise God Lord I just thank you for that time of praise and worship hallelujah glory to God and this time we would like to invite the host pastor Reverend Ewart McDonald which is the host pastor of this Greater Portmore Open Bible Church, to come at this time to do the welcome. Reverend Yacht McDonald. No matter what may, may come our way, our lives are in the hands of Almighty God. Somebody put your hands together and magnify the name of the Lord our God. He never sleeps, he never slumber. There's no problem that is too hard for him and nothing takes him by surprise. Is God Almighty, is our Father, is our friend. One more time, put your hands above your heads and strike them for the Lord. Our lives are in the palm of his hands. Praise be to our God, our Father and friend. Just before I do the welcome, I have uh, two prayer requests. One um, from Brother Dare requesting prayer for Sister Tanya Dare because she is not well. And our uh, Sister Montague will be doing, is, she's be doing a surgery this Wednesday. And uh, the men of vision went into to the, the community. They ministered to a family, and the family is here this morning. In fact, they picked them up. And so really, let us put our hands together for our men. Put our hands together for our men. We want to thank God for that. And I hear the family in particular need prayer. And so I'm going to invite the family to come. Stand that family that was invited and picked up. Where, where are you? Just stand. All right. Please put your hands together for them. And we're going to invite you to, we're going to invite you to just come forward. We're going to be praying for you, especially. And if you are not well this morning, if you are not well, we're going to be praying a special prayer for those who are not well. You could just stand where you are. If you're not feeling so well, or if you want to come on down, just come, come along. If you're not feeling so well and you can stand, all right. We can leave you if not well as well. Could somebody just stand with his family? If you're not feeling well, just stand right where you are. Yes, great. Men are standing with the family. Praise be to God. God is a prayer answering God, and we want to thank him for ways. And Brother Montague is coming. 
He is standing in proxy for his wife, Sister Montague. Yes, put your hands together for that. Could somebody just stand with Brother Montague at this time as we pray for him? Brethren, just stretch your hands towards these that have come forward at this time. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this family. You know them by name, and you know the situation in, in particular that is prevailing. But, oh God, you are a prayer answering God. You tell us that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. And so we put this family before you, these two little girls. Whatever the situation is, we ask that you'll work it out, O oh God, for your glory and for their good, for our good. Lord God, we pray that you'll bless them, keep them, and protect and preserve them and provide work a miracle in this family that they'll be able to say look what the lord god has done and we put a deposit in our prayers for that which you are doing for this family in the name of jesus christ of nazareth lord god we thank you for brother montague even even as he stand proxy for his wife we pray that you breathe upon him cover him under your blood and oh god do for this man of god that which no other god can do we lift up sister montague at this time lord god she is preparing to do a surgery nothing takes you by surprise and if you take us to it you will take us through it we're confident oh god that you are the well able god and so god if she will have to do this surgery we pray that the doctors will operate skillfully with every precision oh god lord god we pray that the recovery will be speedy wherever sister montague is at this time oh god we pray that you'll comfort her heart rest your hand upon her and enfold her with your mighty arms of love at this time in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we decree and we declare victory whatever way you choose whether you will heal her now even as we pray or if you choose to take her to uh, to the doctor to a surgery but we are declaring and we are declaring healing complete healing we lift up sister tanya there at this time oh god we don't know what is wrong but you are dr jesus and you tell us in jeremiah 33 3 that we should call unto you and you will show us great and mighty things that we know not of and so oh god wherever sister tanya there is at this time lay your hands of healing upon her you see healing is the children's bread and so god we fight off disease and sicknesses oh god from our bodies we rebuke oh Oh God, every infirmity now, and we decree and we declare, Sister, there's total healing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh God. Every other person that is gathered in this congregation, those in the virtual space, or those within the hearing of my voice, right now in the name of Jesus, we call forth our healing, oh God. Oh God, touch us from the crown of our heads to the very soles of our feet. Whatever is the condition, oh God, we bring them to you, oh God, and we are decreeing and we are declaring healing god the next doctor visit what the doctor saw the last time they will not see this time on the next visit oh god heal your people here and everywhere oh god lord you have secured our healing by taking the stripes oh god yes the word says by this by your stripes we are healed oh god so we are healed oh god we are healed of, of diabetes we're healed of high blood pressure every cyst, every cancer cell be burnt right now oh god by the power of the holy ghost by the fire of the holy ghost oh god heal your people cataract glaucoma oh god every eye condition we speak to you now in the name of jesus christ of nazareth every nerve condition we command you to settle right now low blood pressure we say normalize right now in the name of jesus every inflammation every swelling oh god that person with a back pain right now i speak to that back pain now in the name of jesus that pinched nerve right now we speak to you now 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we command, oh God, our bodies, our minds to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh God. Every knee condition, oh God, be settled now, be healed now, heal our minds now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we put a deposit on our prayers. We say thank you, Jesus, for hearing and answering and healing our bodies and minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Somebody put your hands together in celebration. Somebody's being healed even now. Even now, healing is taking place. Praise God. You may return to your seats. And we're happy indeed to have you. Praise be to God. Well, it is, it is welcome time. And let me say welcome to one and all this morning. It is really good to have us all gathered here after the, there was heavy reds. God is indeed a keeping God. And if you're worshiping here with us, at the Greater Portmore Open Bible Church, for the very first time, we kindly ask you just to stand right where you are. If this is your first time worshiping with us, just stand right where you are. Please go ahead and put your hands together for our first timers. Please remain standing until you are attended to by one of our friendship persons. We are indeed happy and delighted and excited to have you worshiping with us. And so as soon as you are attended to, you may take your seat as soon as you have been attended to. We were really, really happy to have you. Could we put our hands together one more time for our first time once? Praise be to God. All right, if today is your birthday or you recently celebrated a birthday, you soon celebrate your birthday. Could you just stand? We want to celebrate with you. Any birthday celebrants? All right, not, not today. Oh yes, there's a little girl waving, all right. All right, please put your hands together for our birthday celebrant. Yes, please, Mr. Music, give us a birthday song. Princess friend, give us a wave. All right, praise be to God. You may be seated. Do we have any person, person celebrating a wedding anniversary, or you will soon celebrate same? Could you just stand right where you are? Any persons celebrating wedding anniversary? All right. Not seeing any person. This morning, we have worshiping with us. The Woolmers Trust High School for Girls, the Stagger Shift class of 1983. And so we're going to ask that group to stand, just stand so we can recognize you, especially at this time. Just stand right where you are, the class of 1983. We're happy to have you. May God bless you. And please come again. Give them a better hand than that. Yes, Sister Fennel, all of you. You may be seated. All, all the wool in the house, just stand where you are so we can see you. Okay, all right. Put your hands together for them. All right. So to bring, we are going to have a greeting and a presentation um, from, the, from Dr. Patricia Kinlock. And so she will bring a greeting on behalf of the group and also make a presentation. We invite her to come along at this time. Let her feel welcome as she comes. Uh, celebrating their 40th year anniversary of the batch leaving Woolmouth. <laughs>
Good morning, everyone. Greetings to our host pastor, Reverend Ewart MacDonald, and his wife, Sister Brenda MacDonald, the entire leadership, the congregation, family, and friends. Thank you for allowing us to join you at your place of worship here, the Greater Portmore Open Bible. As we celebrate 40 years since we graduated from the Woolmers Trust High School for Girls. It's a legacy worth remembering. And this was prepared by the Staggershift Writing Club. It was September 1st, 1978, when a group of approximately 120 young ladies passed their common entrance examinations and entered the gates of Woolmans High School for girls. The excitement and expectations that came with attending a new school were evident. But so too were the feelings of intimidation and fear, as none of us really knew what to expect. However, what we did not know upon entering Woolmers was that we were to become a special group for the next five years. We 1978 was a very significant year in the life of the school. The Woolmers Trust was celebrating its 250th anniversary. The school song was written to commemorate the events. Also, it signaled the birth of an experiment called the Stagger Shift, a brilliant and adventurous idea piloted by the then illustrious and brave principal, Miss Audrey Pinto. In support of and in partnership with the Ministry of Education, a few schools were asked to accommodate more students than usual that year. Miss Pinto's acceptance of such a proposal was unprecedented for the Woolmer Schools for Girls. There was a challenge as the school accepted more girls than the first form. Homerooms were available. In other words, they did not have enough classroom spaces. The auditorium we called the hall that accommodated the General Assembly for the school's population was, con was converted to serve as our holding classrooms. There were four forms. Each was assigned a specific corner. For us, school began with assembly at 9 a.m. and ended at 3 p.m. Thus, we became known as the stagger shift. Half of our day was spent with the remaining school population. Miss Nora McDonald, I'm sorry, Miss Nora Donaldson was the designated coordinator for the group. It was customary that forms be identified by spelling W-O-L-M-E-R for each year group, symbolizing the name of the school's founder, John Woolmer. That year, the additional four first forms were assigned the letters of the founder's Christian name, John. But there was a twist. The forms were identified as J -S -H -N, and X was used in order not to repeat the O that was previously used. The stagger shift ended in its third year as all students began classes at 7.30 a.m. Despite this change, some forms still have their regular in the auditorium till the end of their fifth form year. Now, 
approximately 40 years later. Some members of this group of ladies are still in touch, celebrating our proud legacy as Wilmerians. We still remember the pride and joy of entering the prestigious organization called Wilmers and all the activities that were planned to celebrate the 250th anniversary. Sadly, some of the ladies who traveled that journey are no longer here to celebrate. We will forever remember them and hold them dearly in our hearts. Our time at Wilma's molded, shaped us in strong, talented, vibrant, and successful women who we are today. We will continue to live by our motto, Age, Quad Agis. Whatever you do, do it to the best of your ability. I thank you. Reverend McDonald, President, good morning. Good morning, congregation. I would just like to make a presentation to the church on behalf of the Bulmers Girls Trust High School for Girls. I would like to present you with this token of our appreciation for accommodating us during your time of worship here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Patricia Kinlock and our own sister, Vinette Fennell, who is also a part of this Wilmer's Trust High School for Girls, Stagger Shift of Class 1983. At this time, put your hands together again one more time for them. At this time, we will take the announcement and it will be done by our own deaconess, Monica Williamson. Good morning, church family. Great to be in the house of the Lord on this cool, very cool Sunday morning. The announcements are as follows, and each Sunday we share the Open Bible Standard Churches of Jamaica, some of their our beliefs. And this morning the focus is on mission, today being Missions Sunday. We believe that the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ is to carry the gospel message to the entire world. And this is literal and imperative, and it is binding today and it is the supreme privilege and duty of the Church of Jesus Christ to stress the cause of worldwide missions. It is our duty to share the gospel with others. The scripture reference is Matthew 9, 28, and Mark 16, verse 15. Okay, the rest of the announcements are we will be having Sunday school discipleship class, and a membership class immediately following this morning's service. The Women of Worth, which is our women's group, there are still some items from the yard sale that is available. Now, these items are not for sale. You may go out at the front and just take an item. These are good items. Some of them are new and some are used. 
However, we are asking you to just give us a donation for the women's group. And this is the final day. Our weekly services, we will still be having Bible study this Tuesday, which is November 21st at 8 p.m. And this is via the Zoom platform. Mountain Movers Prime Meeting will be held on Thursday at 11 a.m. right here in the sanctuary. And Young People's Meeting will be held on Friday at 7 p.m. Now, the Young People's Meeting is held every Friday except the fifth Friday. So, young people, please come out for young people's meeting. So, what happens next week, Sunday? Nobody can tell me what is happening? Harvest, yes. So, next Sunday will be the Pastor's Appreciation and Harvest Thanksgiving service. And the theme of this is looking back, looking forward continuing the mission with praise and thanksgiving. And we are asking for contributions of ground provisions, pastry, or other items that you have. And envelopes are available from the ushers. And for those of us who is going to be bringing ground provisions, with all this rain that has been falling, I'm sure there's going to be lots of ground provisions available. Amen? And our Christmas Sunday School program will be held on Sunday, December 17th. And the theme of this, the, the production is Emmanuel, God with us. And we'll give you more details later. The National Men of Vision concert for 2023 will be held at the Kingston Open Bible Church on Sunday, December 10th, starting at 5.30 p.m. Tickets will cost only 2,500. Oh, yes, 2,500. And we're asking that you pray for this event and plan to support the Men of Vision Department. We're also encouraging you to continue to give to the Love Box, which is out Every Sunday morning, you may take a tin or a packet or a case of non-perishable items, and this will be distributed to those persons who are in need. And we are ever so grateful for your tithes and offerings, for your love gifts, which you continue to give from Sunday to Sunday or during the week. Um, if you're here and you want to give and you do not have any cash with you, you may give online. Our banking information is the National Commercial Bank, and it's a university branch. And the account number is 401-094-431. And if you're giving online, please send us the details. You may send it to our email, and the email is greaterportmoreob at gmail.com. We're asking you to remember to pray for the families of Sister Sandra Campbell and Sister Lodge, who lost their relatives recently. And today being Mission Sunday, I have a question for you. Did you tell someone about Jesus? Did you mention his name to a friend? Eugene Peterson, well-known Bible teacher, says this, before the gospel reaches the whole world, it has to reach one person. Have a great week, and God bless you. Praise God. It's time for our scripture, which is taken from St. John ch chapter 4, reading from verse 1 to 42. And the Woolmers Trust High School Girls Staggership Class of 1983 continue to grace us. And someone here this morning who is playing a dual role, who is a member of the mission department, and she's also a member of this group. I take this pleasure inviting 
Sister Vinette Fennell to come to do the scripture this morning. May you stand when you have found the scripture. It is taken from St. John chapter 4 and we'll be reading from verse 1 to 42. Sister Fennell. Good morning, church. Shall we stand for the reading this morning? Okay, thank you. Good morning, church. Yes. Shall we all stand for the reading of the Lord's word, please? All right. Um, I'll be reading from St. John chapter 4, verses 1 to 42. Okay. I'll be reading also from the King James Version. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria, to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come either to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou as well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. He worship he know not what we know, what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers 
shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeth such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah's cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled. And he talked with the woman, yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out to the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that thou know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Have any man brought him out to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth rages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that wherein ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. And said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Here in the portions of God's holy word, we honor it by saying, Thanks be to God. It's, it's time for the word. And to introduce this morning's speaker, to, to introduce this morning's speaker will be Reverend Ewart McDonald. But before he comes, we will have a ministering item by the choir.
Somebody say wow. Somebody say wow. Put your hands together for the ministry of the choir. Praise be to God. Praise is what we do. God inhabits the praises of his people. Is that an amen? Amen. Praise be to God. We want to thank God for the ministry of the choir. And the choir is still recruiting. If God has given you, blessed you with a gift, ministry of singing, well, join. You know, be, be a part of and minister in song to the Lord and bless our hearts. Is that an amen? Amen. I'm sure you'll agree with me that there's a sweet anointing in this place this morning. Is that an amen? Amen. And uh, we're going to do that little song. There's a sweet anointing in this place. And I know it is the presence of the Lord. Praise be to God. There's a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a sweet spoken word. Today is Mission Sunday and you know again we really want to commend and con congratulate the men for you know, having brought some persons here this morning. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. It's a part of our mission and so you know, God has blessed us with different abilities and capacities. I want to encourage us to increase our reaching out to a friend, a neighbor, a family member, 
tell somebody else about Jesus Christ. Tell them about the services here at the Greater Portmore Open Bible Church. Invite them to come. And if you have to and have the capacity, take them along with you. God has always provided a word for his people each time we gather here, whenever we gather here. Today is no different. This morning, our speaker by profession is an executive secretary, was prepared theologically at the Jamaica Open Bible Institute, now Cetus, presently serves as a WOW advisor, and you might be wondering what is WOW. It is Women of Worth, it is our women's group, and presently serves as one of our elders. Our speaker this morning come to us in the person of Elder Juliet Gordon. Put your hands together and make welcome God's servant as she comes to share. Elder Gordon. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. This is a beautiful day. This is a day the Lord has made. And we are so thankful this morning that we are gathered in his house. And there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place this morning. Praise God. Greetings again, one and all. Greetings to our friends, the Wolmerians, these powerful ladies. So good to have you worshiping with us. And this morning, the scripture was read, beautifully read, by Sister Fennel. God is a good God. I'm going to be sharing this morning on a topic in the form of a question. Is it well with your soul? Is it well with your soul? Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we are so thankful for your goodness and for your mercies. Lord, I stand this morning as your child to deliver your word to your people. I pray, God, that your word will go forth with clarity your word will go forth with authority, and your word will go forth and accomplish what you have sent it to accomplish. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Praise God. Some years ago, I was at a funeral service at one of our churches, and uh, I spoke to a sister who I knew very, very well. She was a Christian for many years. And she was ministering at the service. And, you know, funerals we were just talking generally about salvation and all of that. And she turned to me and she said, Sister Gordon, you know, I don't really know if I am saved. And I said, what? What do you mean you don't know? And she said, I don't know if I'm saved. So I shared with her, you know, from the word and assured her of salvation. And again, I want to ask the question, do you know if you're really saved? Do you have the assurance of salvation? And this question might seem a little way, but when you talk to some person, they said, you know, they're not so sure. But guess what? If you're not sure here, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late because we're the tree fall there shall it die. The book of John is one of the four Gospels of the New Testament, and it portrays Jesus as the Son of God, Jesus the God-man. In John 1, it says, the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. John the Baptist declares that in John 1 and verse 29, and he, he says, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
The passage that was read earlier is normally referred to as the woman at the well or the woman of Samaria, a very, very familiar passage. And in the passage, we see Jesus demonstrating his love for humanity and the woman's love for her fellow men. Brothers and sisters, Jesus' mission was to restore man to his father. In verse 34 of the passage that was read, he says, My meat is to do the will of my father and to finish his work. On this Mission Sunday, I want to remind us that Jesus was in the business of soul winning. While he was on earth, he was on a mission. In Matthew 3, verse 2, he says, Repent, turn from sin, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And today, on this Mission Sunday, I want to say to us, if you do not know the Lord as your Savior, turn, repent, and turn. Is it well with your soul? Is your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, Ella Williams? Do you have the assurance of salvation? Do you know for sure? Do you know for sure? Many years ago, it was in 1981, I walked down the aisles of Kingston Church. I walked from the back. Some of you may know the large church, and I was invited. I walked around the back, way, way up to the altar, and I say yes to Jesus. And I want to tell you, brethren, that I grew up in church. I went to Sunday school. I went to the altar many, many times, many, many times. But there was something that was not settled. There were, and I wasn't really going about and doing a lot of, you know, some of the things that non-Christians do. You know? But I knew that there was a longing. I knew that there was a hunger. I knew that there was something missing. Sunday school student, church go, but I knew that something was missing. But on that morning, I went to the prayer room. Tears couldn't, was just flowing. And after the council was finished, I left that church that morning, knowing that whatever came my way, I was saved. I was saved. I was sure of that. I was saved. And I want to thank God, you know, many things happen, you know, you make mistake and you walk along the way, you didn't do everything right. But guess what? I know I am saved. If it was to come this morning, I am ready. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. It is well with my soul. Is it well with your soul? Is it well? And this morning I want to say to us again. If it is well with your soul, there are some things that you and I must bear in mind. And I want to share just three things with us this morning. Just leave three things with us. And firstly, are we convinced that the gospel message, the good news is true? Are we really, really convinced as we come Sunday after Sunday? Are we convinced do we believe that the truth of God's word transformed the heart? The word of God says the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus, he gives living water, verse 10. And in Romans 10 and verse 9, the word says, if we confess our sin, if we confess with our mouth, the Lord Jesus and shall believe in our heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made 
unto salvation. We must have that assurance. We must have the assurance of salvation. Do you have an encounter with that man? That man who gives that living water, this water that leads to eternal life. Hallelujah. Praise God. If we are convinced about the gospel message, one of the other things that we need to do, we need to tell our story. We need to share our story. What has Jesus done for you? And some persons have some very riveting testimony. You know, they said they were sleeping and they saw lightning and thunder and they, you know, they got this vision and somebody appeared to them and, you know, a lot of things. But some of us, it's just a simple step of faith. We heard the word and we accept the word and we confess and we walk in obedience. In verse 28 and verse 29 of the passage, the Bible said, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said unto the men, come, see a man who told me all things I ever did is not the Christ. And it, it, is, it is so interesting when you read scripture. The Bible didn't say she went back to the people in the city. It didn't say it went back to some, the crowd. But it specifically said she went back to the men. It seems as if we know of this woman. Maybe she was hanging out with the men. So she went back to the familiar place. She went back to the place where the men were. And she said, come, see a man who told me all things I ever did. Is not this the Christ? We need to tell our story. We need to tell how Jesus made us all. We need to tell what Jesus has done for us. Some, some persons are, you know, they're very good at witnessing and they go out and they share. But some, all Jesus is asking us to do, just share what he has done. What has he done? Do you remember that day? That day? That day when he called you. That day when you said yes to Jesus. That's what the woman did. She went. She went back to the men. And she said, you come. Come, see a man who told me all things I ever did. Is not this the Christ? And the word of God in verse 39, it says, Many Samaritans believed because of the testimony of the woman. Many Samaritans believed because of the testimony of the woman. Come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. It started with that one woman. Let it start with you this morning. There are some persons you may reach that I will never reach. There are some persons that only you can reach. What about your household? Hmm? What about that unsaved husband? What are those, those children, your family? Tell someone about Jesus. Share what Jesus has done. This woman, on that day, she met the man who knew her secrets. She met the man, although he knew her secrets, he didn't condemn her. He didn't condemn her, but he showed her the way. Do you share this morning your conversion experience with excitement? I met a man, and his name is Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Hallelujah. I'm saved. Unless you repent, the word of God declares in Luke 13, verse 3, you shall all likewise perish. Praise be to God. But not only should we tell our story, but we should take others to Jesus. We should take others to Jesus. In verse 39 also it says, And many believe when they heard Jesus for themselves. And I'm going to read, it says, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him, 
for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he should tarry with them, and he abode there two days. Verse 41, and many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, no, we believe not because of, this, of, the, of, of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this indeed is the Christ, the Savior of the world. So we know two things there. Some believe because of what the woman said, but some believe, they said, they went to Jesus. They believe, they said, we believe, and they told the woman, they said, we believe, not only because of your word, but we heard him for ourselves. And sometimes we have to go out there and bring others in. We have to tell them and we have to bring them in. And the scripture is replete with examples of persons who took others to Jesus Christ. Andrew, it was, who took his brother Peter. He says, I have found the Christ, John 1, verse 40 and 41. And Philip found Nathaniel, John 1, 43 and 44. How can they hear without a preacher? If you have found this good thing, you'd want to share it. Share it with others. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them what Jesus has done. Tell them that Jesus saves. Tell them that Jesus satisfies. And the good news has unlimited power to transform our lives from despair to the light. This woman who was desperate, she became a witness and she told the men about Jesus and many came just because of the woman's testimony. You and I need to go out and tell. Many are waiting for you to tell them. Tell them that Jesus saves. On this Mission Sunday, go and tell. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Not only should we take others to Jesus, but are we thinking about his return with anticipation? Are we just living? We're just going along. The word is coming back. He's coming back. Are we convinced? Acts chapter 1 and verse 11 says, E men of Galilee, just before Jesus, and he was going up, he says, E men of Galilee, why stand it gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you see him go up. He's coming back again. He also says, I've gone to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also are you waiting for his return with anticipation are you looking for the coming of the messiah he's coming back and he's coming back for those whose souls is right whose souls are right jesus is coming back hallelujah hallelujah the songwriter says in the song, Oh, what a wonderful day. I have a future in heaven for sure. There in those missions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day. When at the cross I believe, rich is eternal and blessed is supernal. From his precious hand I receive. Hallelujah. Are you really convinced of the power of the good news? Are you really convinced of the gospel message? Do we think about heaven? Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Hallelujah. And if you do, what are you doing to get your loved ones and others in? We can't save anybody, but the word says we are to go. We are to tell them. Tell them about Jesus. Soul winning is part of the Great Commission. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 8, as you go, tell. So as you go to your barber, tell. As you go to your hairdresser, tell them. As you sit with your lawyer, tell them. As you sit with your business partner, 
Tell them about Jesus. Share your story. Tell them that you met the man Christ Jesus. Tell them what he has done for your soul. Hallelujah. Praise God. Secondly, if we are convinced about the gospel message, we must have compassion for the lost. We must have compassion. Love is the core of the gospel. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was motivated by God's love, love for mankind. Hallelujah. So we must love people. We must love people. Jesus was in the people business. That was his mission while he was here in the flesh. And he's still calling people today. Lack of love for people can end our witness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. The scripture said that Jesus must needs go to Samaria. Verse 4. It says, um, let me read verse, verse 3. He left Judea and departing into Galilee, and he must needs go to Samaria. It was the love of God that took him to Samaria, the love for people that took him to Samaria. John 3, the famous passage that we all know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, you and I, believe it on him, should not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Jesus made personal sacrifice. And you and I are called to make personal sacrifice as we share the gospel. He cut across social barrier and prejudice to meet this woman. The word of God said Jesus was a Jew. And it was a woman herself who testified. She said, but Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. They have no interaction. But here Jesus was watching no face. Jesus went to this woman and shared the good news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only did he, put, did he have to make a personal sacrifice, but guess what? He put his personal feelings aside. The scripture in verse 6, it says, Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. So Jesus was tired. He was weary from his long journey. He was weary, but he had to meet with this woman. He had an appointment. Hallelujah. He had an appointment. And Jesus, so sometimes we may not feel like it. We may feel pressed down our own cares and concern. But guess what? Jesus, Jesus, he took time out. He was weary. He was tired from his long journey, the scripture said. But he took time out to share with that woman. Hallelujah. He not only put aside his personal feelings, but guess what? He played into the hands of his accusers, the influential Pharisees and leaders, those who accused him. They said, this man, he hung out with sinners. And I believe this story would go about because when you read verse, verse 1 of the passage, of verse 4, it says, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and had baptized more disciples than John, so the Pharisees, they, they had each in years, they were here. So they heard that Jesus baptized more people than John. So guess what? They would have heard that here Jesus was talking this, with this woman. This woman who had several men. This woman who was supposed to be, she came at the well at a time when maybe nobody was there because she probably didn't want them to accuse her. She didn't want them to talk about her. And the people, the Pharisees, they knew. So they would no doubt and said, you know, guess what? You don't know the one Jesus. Let's tell you about him. You know him talking to, talking to the woman who, who have so many men. 
But Jesus had to put that aside. And we too have to, you know, we, 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 we have to disregard some of the sayings that people will, will, will say, the things that they will say about us. So they knew her story, and Jesus himself knew her story. She knew, he knew that this woman did not have a good reputation. But guess what? Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. We must follow his example. Hallelujah. 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 The word of God says in Proverbs 11:30, He that winneth soul is wise. We can't save anybody, but our duty is to go and tell them. Tell them about the love of Christ. Tell them that Jesus loves them. And leave the rest to the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit bring conviction. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, as, I, as, I, as I prepare, and you know, and the Lord, you know, my heart to what was to share. I remember, you know, many years ago, I, I wasn't, a person who was really in this missions, missions, missions thing. I, when I was at Kingston, every second Sunday was Mission Sunday. And we had a lady, Jean Denham, some of us may remember her. She was big on mission. She went to Africa and died there. Yes, yes, Sister Andrew. And she, she used to come every Sunday morning and talk about mission. But guess what? I really never, that wasn't my, my service at all. I never really liked, I liked the service because I was saved and I was all right. I wasn't really concerned about anybody else. I want to come to church to hear that, you know, I'm going to be, be blessed, I'm going to be healed, I'm going to have this and so on, because I was satisfied. So I really didn't like, I didn't like crusade. I was a part of it, but it was, you know, just emotion. I would go to crusade. And guess what? One of the things that I had to talk to the Lord about, really, really pray, because I used to love to, 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 to watch the soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. I used to love that. I was a Christian. But guess what? You see, when you have crusades, two weeks of crusade, and I know for two weeks, I am not going to, 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 to get to watch my, my thing. I was so distressed. And one that the Holy Spirit ministered to me because sometime after the crusade, you know, you know, when the altar call and, you know, I go, you know, and share and write, but I really want to get home because I want to call somebody and say, what happened in the bowl and the beautiful, tonight? what happened, you know? And one day the Lord spoke to me and I said, no man, this thing can't work. It can't work. You need to have compassion. You need to get more involved in this mission. Have compassion for people. Love people. And I had to pray until the Holy Spirit ministered to me. And I, you know, I, and I, I really have that desire. That desire can go out and witness. I have a friend, and every time you go, she was just on the ball. She was just on the seat. Every person she meet, she have a conversation. Do you know God? Jesus love you. And I always say, so what, what happened to her, man? You know? But I realized that I didn't have that deep desire. But thanks be to God. God is a good God. God hears and he answers prayer. Hallelujah. I say that to say that some of us naturally... You know, we are saved and we are right. And sometimes, believe it or not, that even in our household, we have the children, we have the family members, and we don't even tell them about Jesus because we are saved. I want to say to us this morning, we need to get involved. We need to share the love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to be patient and be persistent. Sometimes we give up too easily. We tell somebody about the Lord this, and we don't bother again. We don't bother because we say they're not here. But we need to tell them. Many times you go to a funeral and you hear a person would say, it was my grandmother who lay there. She was the one who sent me to Sunday school. She was the one who shared the gospel message with me. And because of, of you know, of her, I am saved. I'm saying this today, sometime, not even in our lifetime, we will not maybe see the person who we witness to come to faith in Jesus Christ. But we must be consistent. We must be patient. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes we give up too easily. Keep pressing. Keep praying for the loved ones. Some plant, 
some water, but it is Jesus Christ, it's God who gives the increase. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was listening to one of our radio stations, and it was a Chicago mission. They were sharing from a mission house. And the leader of that ministry, uh, he said that the ministry, they go out in the street in Chicago, in the body areas, and they would share the gospel with the drug addicts and those on the streets. And he said that there was a particular young woman who got saved. She went out and she got saved. And she, she came into the shelter and she was there for a little while. And before long, she was back out there on the street. And they went back and she heard the gospel again and she came back. And that happened for several times. She kept, you know, but they kept praying and they kept sharing and they kept loving her. And they said, he said that they didn't see her for many years. And one day, there was, they went to another, another mission in the city. And there she was, beautiful saved. She was serving as a missionary in that mission. They didn't say any reason why she didn't come back. But sometimes we need to realize that some people are bound. When you save his soul, you're bound. And we need to be discipled. They need deliverance. They need breakthrough. It takes time. It takes patience. And it takes the love of God. So we have to bear with each other. Sometimes you go, you know, and, and you pass people at the latter shop. And you pass people in the bar. You know? There go you and I, but for the grace of God. Let us love people through Jesus. Right here in Greater Portmore, we have the back road behind us. How many times we pass, but we wind up our car. Do we ever pray for those ladies out there? Pray for the proprietors, those who are money by some means out there. Let us have the love of God so when we pass, we may not be able to stop and share the word, but at least we can pray for them. Ask the Lord to take them out of their situation. There goes I, but for the grace of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. In Portmore here, we are sandwiched between two prisons. We have the Fort Augusta back there, and we have the Tamarin Farm down, down the bottom there. Do we pray for them? Do we find opportunities to go and visit and share so that those who are bound can hear the gospel and be released? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's reflect on the good news. What Jesus has done for you and I, he can do it for anybody else. No one is too far gone. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was the, the Scottish preacher, John Knox. He said, give me Scotland or I'll die. That was his passionate plea for his countrymen. Give me Scotland. Will we say, you and I say, Lord, give me Portmore. Give me greater Portmore. I'm not going to rest. Hallelujah. I'm not going to rest from my knees. I'm not going to rest until people of Portmore are changed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When we pray for those who are in their house, we never know who we're praying for. That man or that woman we pray for. Maybe we say, when that person is saved, we prevent that person from, you know, drinking or smoking and crashing your car. You know, or do something to our children. We need to be concerned. We need to pray. We need to be convinced. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is a good Lord. And finally, brethren, we should not only be convinced of the truth of the gospel message. We should not have only have compassion for the lost, but we should endeavor to live a consecrated lifestyle. We should live holy lives so that others will come to know Jesus Christ. Some persons are watching us. Hallelujah. Let us reflect kingdom principles. Let the fragrance of Christ flows from our lives. Let us not lose our saltiness. We are salt and light. It's declared in Matthew chapter 4. Let us not allow our light to go out. 
You know that the early Christians, the early believers, they were called Christians, little Christ, because when the people saw how they lived, that's how the, the, the word Christian came about in the book of Acts. They were seen as little Christ because they bore the image of Christ and they reflected Christ in their lifetime, their lifestyle. You and I must remember that in this earth and vessel, God has an investment. We represent Christ in our walk and in our talk as we go. We belong to the kingdom. We are kingdom people. We are royalty. We must dress, we must walk, and we must behave like kingdom people. Hallelujah. That neighbor may be watching you, watching you for a long time. That boss is observing you. That family member is taking note. Your classmates, young people, are looking on. Your Sunday school student is watching you. Are you a reflector? Are you a light bearer? Are you and I reflecting Christ? Hallelujah. We must have a kingdom perspective. Live with eternity in view. Hallelujah. He's coming back. He went away not to stay. He's coming back again. Hallelujah. Praise God. It was evangelist Billy Graham who said, the greatest treasure you can lay in heavenly planet is the souls of men and women. Women. Every soul one to the Lord represents a star on your crown when you finally get home. Hallelujah. Will there be any stars in your crown? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We must commit to a life of prayer. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers in the ripened harvest field. Matthew 9, 37, 38. I don't want to be left out, Lord. I want to be a laborer. Don't leave me out. Hallelujah. We must rely on the Holy Spirit. We are equipped to be light bearers because the Holy Spirit indwells us when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We have the Holy Spirit living on the inside and we can be empowered by his spirit. Jesus said to his disciples, he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and he shall be witnesses. That same power is available to you and I today. That same power will enable us to be better witnesses. Hallelujah. Jesus is counting on you. Jesus is counting on I. Let us be fishers of men. Follow me, he says, and I will make you fishers of men. We are commissioned to go. We are commissioned to go. Is it well with your soul? Are you ready to meet your maker? If your answer is yes, let us share the good news. Hallelujah. Praise be to Lord. You know, when I was at the seminary years ago, one of our assignments was, it was a missions class, and one of our assignments was to go on the street, and three of us um, went. I was in a group of three, and we went. We went on Alburn Road, and in the night, we went to the ladies of the night. And the brothers and sisters, when we went, the first lady we met, you know, and almost nude. It was two females and a male. And as we approached the lady, the lady we said, good night. We want to share Christ with you. We want to share the good news. And as we started, that young lady started to cry. She started to cry. She was just crying, crying, crying. And she said to us, I'm from the country. The reason I'm here I have some children. I don't remember if it was three or four. And I'm not working. And that is why I'm out here in the night. But she listened to the word. And I took her number. I had her number. I spoke with her. I called her and prayed with her a number of times until I, I lost contact. I don't know if she's still alive. 
But I'm praying and trusting God that our soul is saved. Believers, they need the word. They need to hear that Jesus loved them. They need to hear. Hallelujah. The song says, rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. Though they are slighting, still is waiting. Waiting on the penitent child to receive. Plead with them earnestly. Plead with them gently. He will forgive if they only believe. If we are convinced, brothers and sisters, about the gospel message, if we have compassion for the loss, if we are committed to a consecrated lifestyle, let us tell somebody about Jesus. Let us mention his name to a family member. Let us mention his name to a friend. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Before I take my seat and I invite Reverend Mark to lead the altar call. If you are here this morning and you're a Christian, you're living for the Lord. I'm standing to you're like me. He said, I want to do more. I want to win soul for the Lord. I want to share the gospel um, more often. I want to share Christ with others. I want you to stand with me. I'm going to pray a brief prayer. If you are here, you want to share Christ a little more. Can you stand with me this morning? Is there anyone you're here this morning? You want to be a better witness. You want to be a more effective witness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, some persons are standing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father in heaven, we are standing this morning because we want to be a better witness. We want to share Christ, oh God, to our family members. We want to share Christ to those who we come in contact daily. Lord, we need your help. We need your help. Those of us who are not baptized with the Holy Spirit, baptize us, Lord, so that we can go and witness more effectively. You are a good God. You are a faithful God. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Give us passion for souls. Give us a desire to love people to care for the dying, to love the lost, to go out of our way, to share you. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. God bless you. What a word to our hearts this morning on this Mission Sunday. A word of encouragement, a word of motivation, a word of instruction, a word of direction. And there are two songs that were mentioned in the message. And a part of one of them raises a question for all of us. Is it well with your soul? Is it well with your soul? All of us gathered here this morning would have heard the gospel message maybe several times over. And we're fortunate to be alive, fortunate to be, you know, blessed to be in this gathering, blessed to be in a country where there's freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of movement, where we can move around, move along to hear the gospel message. And the question to all of us, is it well with your soul, with our souls? And if we answer in the affirmative, there's another song. A part of it, it says, rescue the perishing, care for the dying. We're, we're in the well dying moments of the year 2023. Few more days month plus, and we will, under God, if God allows, cross into a brand new year. And as we, you know, reflect how many persons we would have shared our faith with, 
you know, as God would have blessed us with home and cars and health and jobs and opportunities. You know, we're able-bodied, we could move around. We have co-workers, neighbors, family members, friends, how many persons or, you know, you reflect, when was the last time you and I, and you notice I'm saying you and I, when was the last time you and I seized the opportunity to say to a co-worker, you know, the person next to you, Jesus loves you. He died for your sins. Or a neighbor, family member, somebody. When was the last time we did that? And uh, scripture reminds us that he that brings soul is wise. And, you know, we're saying there are many ills. And we say, well, the political directorate of this country need to fix it. And, of course, they have a role to play. But the Bible says that if my people were called by my name to humble themselves and pray and turn, then healing will come to our island home, Jamaica, or any land anywhere. So there's a huge responsibility that is up on our shoulders. We must be convinced of the gospel, be compassionate, live a consecrated life, commit to a life of prayer. And Jesus is counting on you and I. Shall we all just bow our heads in our hearts? The Bible says that a man examine himself. And let's just for a few seconds look at where we are in terms of our sharing of our faith with others. And while we reflect and pray, the praise team is here. Could we do this little song, praise team? Lord, I am available to you. Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say my storage is empty and I If you are here today, you are not a Christian, here avails an opportunity to surrender your heart and life to Jesus Christ. We don't know if this will be the last Sunday morning service that we gather like this. Maybe this will be the last gospel message we hear before the trumpet of God sound. And we all present, those in the virtual space, those within the hearing of my voice, we will be without excuse because we would have one more time 
had an opportunity and the privilege of hearing the gospel message presented to us. And my friends, it is either we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and guide, or we reject him and continue without him. You are here today, my friends, and you are not a Christian. Say, so Lord, I am available to you. I want to surrender my heart and life to you today. I want you to change my life. Is there one that will say, I want to invite Jesus Christ in my heart and life? If you're here like that today, and you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you just to indicate by an upraised hand, and we'll pray with you and pray for you. I see your hand, my friend. Take it down. Is there another? I see it. I see that hand. Take it down. Is there another that will say, on this day, I want to surrender my heart and life to Jesus Christ? Is there one? All right. All those who Jesus Christ called in the New Testament, he called them publicly. So those who have raised the hand, and if the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to your heart, don't wait until tomorrow. Come. I want to invite you to come forward. The angels in heaven. All right. Put your hands together. Put your hands together for those who have come and are coming forward. There's celebration in heaven. And so we celebrate. And we see the men coming forward. Young lady, put your hands together for that which the hand of God is doing. We don't know about tomorrow, my friends. But today... Now is the day of, sal of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. Is there one more? Maybe you're a backslider. Maybe you once walked with the Lord and you're no longer serving Jesus Christ. Who says we'll see tomorrow? Come from where you are, my friend. Now is the day of salvation. The Bible says, now, today, this is your day. This is your time. Will you come? Is there one more? I will say, today I want to commit my heart to Jesus Christ. I want to receive him as my Lord and Savior. Praise be to God. I'm going to invite those at the altar just to bow your heads on your hearts. Close your eyes. And I want, you, I want to invite you to say a prayer to Jesus. Say something to him in your own words, how you can. This is why we gather here Sunday morning after Sunday morning, to invite people to Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Now that you have prayed, keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. I'm going to invite you, and maybe you are in the virtual space. Maybe you didn't come forward for whatever reason, but seize the opportunity, my friend. Pray this prayer after me. And if you pray this prayer in faith believing, Jesus Christ will change your heart and your life forever. Pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. I recognize that I am a sinner and today I repent of all my sins. Today I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Brethren, just stretch your hands towards these that have come forward as we pray over their lives. Our Father and our God, we thank you. For these that have responded to the public proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. O oh God, we ask that you breathe upon them. Enfold them with your mighty arms of love. O oh God, reveal to them, O oh God, your grace and your mercy and your love for them and over them. Breathe upon them, O oh God. And we commit and we commend them today for every blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen and amen. Could we celebrate with the angels in heaven? There's celebration in heaven when one comes to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Those who are standing here, some counselors are behind you. Please go with them. We want to get some information from you. God bless you. God bless you. Please go with the counselors as they will 
talk to you. Put your hands together for them. This is what the hand of God is doing. This is what it's all about. Amen. Amen. And amen. Continue, my friend, to invite a friend. Tell a neighbor. We have the space. And we're here every Sunday morning, 7.30 a.m. We want to thank those who have joined us online. And if you have given your heart to Jesus Christ, we are located here at the Greater Portmore Open Bible Church, right across from Gortuka. If you want to reach us, if you want to talk to us some more, you can reach us at 502-509. That's 502-509. We'll be more than happy to talk to you and to pray with you. If you're far away from us, find a Bible-believing church and tell the pastor and the brethren that you gave your heart to Jesus Christ on this day. May God bless you, my friend, and do remember that you are important and God loves you. Thank you. God bless you. Praise be to God. Somebody put your